Hey guys, it's Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge, and I've got a budget knife for you today. Budget is the name of the game here. You can get this knife with these wood handle scales like this, or with black G10 handle scales. And with the black G10, you're going to save yourself a few more coins as well. We've got a Voltron knife here, and I want to get more familiar with that brand. This is my second Voltron that I'm reviewing, and they got the logo right there on the blade. And that's the only writing or designations anywhere on this knife. We've got a sheep's point front here. Some might want to call it a Warncliffe. Uh, we've got a curved blade with a belly, so that's why I call it a sheep's foot. Warncliffe tends to be a straight edge with that kind of end on it. Uh, thumb stud is one side only, and let's see, the way it's made... Uh, yeah, it's pressed in. I'm not going to try to get that out and change it to the other side. Uh, not advisable. <laughs> and then we've got open pillar construction. We've got two sort of hourglass shaped pillars there. And the liner lock on the inside. Uh, there's enough access there for your thumb to undo the lock and close the knife. That works very well. Let's get to the tabletop and take a closer look at this knife right now. Okay, so here it's on the tabletop. You can take a good close look at it. There's no skeletonizing, so I'm not really going to show you the insides, uh, but we've got washers. We've got a white nylon washer on this side, and you can see it right there, just on the edge right there. And the other side also has a white nylon washer in it as well, so we've got washers. Uh, We've got a nice wood. I like the green on here. It looks very, very nice. The uh, lanyard hole is in a good spot. There's no pocket clip on this knife, so it's a nice little pop pocket dropper kind of knife. We've got Torx head screws, so if you want to take it apart, that's how you're going to do it. I think those are all T8s. I'll double check that. We've got a hollow grind on this uh, 8CR13 MOV stainless steel blade, which is a decent budget steel. So there we go. Big stop pin right here. Lockup is solid. I'll give you a close-up shot of that. It's a perfect lockup for a brand new knife. And alignment when it's closed is a little bit off, but not bad. And no blade play side to side, up and down. Quite good that way. And there's a close-up. Maybe I'll give you a close-up picture of those pillars for that open pillar construction. So there's the main part of the knife. Let's do the dimensions now. We've got, and uh, I'll say the metric measurements and I'll put the inches on the screen. 7.3 centimeters of a cutting edge. Blade length from the wood to the tip is 7.7 .7 centimeters. The blade thickness is three millimeters. The blade depth is two centimeters. The thickness of the edge behind the grind, it's a bit thick, 0.67 millimeters. I wish it was thinner, but you get what you get right here. And the grind angle. Oh, this one's kind of odd. The grind angle on this side here is 25.8 degrees, so fairly steep. And the grind angle on this side, you can see more steel because it's much more shallow, 14.7 degrees on this side. It has a fairly sharp edge from the factory, nothing great. Well, it's 8CR13, and this was a budget knife that they rushed through. So it doesn't cut super great from the factory, but not bad. That's without me doing any stropping or anything. I just used it for some testing and I've cut some cardboard and some other things. Now let's get to the handle part of the measurements. Handle length is 9.8 centimeters. The grip area between my thumbs is 8.6 centimeters. The handle thickness is 1.7 centimeters. The handle depth this way right here, and it's largest right after this first twill, is 2.3 centimeters. Oh, and I didn't get the measurement of this, but so I'll put this measurement on the screen, how big it is uh, when it's closed 
uh, the depth of the blade. I'll put that on the screen right now. Total length of this knife is 17.5 centimeters. It weighs 89 grams, which is 3.15 ounces. So nice and light for what you get. I don't know if the G10 is going to be more or less. I suspect it's going to cost more. Now, the fit and finish on this, I'm giving it just an average to below average rating. And that's because of one main reason. You've not seen me use the thumb stud yet, have you? And that is because, how do you get at that thumb stud? How do you get your thumb on it? Oh, I got it. <laughs> just barely. There's hardly any room back there to get your thumb on it. And as often as not, if I'm just having it in my pocket and I'm thinking about it, I'm missing all the time. I have to focus and push really hard and then I can get it. So this wood here is much too thick. Uh, they need to take off a lot of this wood right in this section here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand this down and create much better access to the release because the liner gives enough room to reach that area. So there's no problem that way, but I need more access to get to the thumb stud. So we need to get it nice and cut out so that when it's closed, I can get at that thumb stud and just flick the knife open. Now I think the action is going to be quite nice once I can get at that thumb stud. So I'll be doing that part of the video a little bit later. So I fixed it and you can see right there, there's lots of access right there. I used uh, this. Uh, 20 piece rubber drum sanding kit. You get uh, four different sizes of these. Strip those over. I put it on my drill press and it was super easy. Uh, even if you just have a, a handheld drill, that can work very well. Just have you know this held on nice and still somewhere. So you can see there the thumb just slides in there no problem. And now, great easy access to that thumb stud every single time, no questions at all if I'm going to be able to get that thumb stud actuated or not. So that's a really good thing and I'm just putting some paste wax on there to seal up the wood a little bit. I'm not going to sand for a long time to make the grain look all pretty and take out all the the, the marks from sanding because you know this is a less than ten dollar knife and it's a user worker. Now all I need to do is sharpen that blade and if somebody wants this knife you know, I'll sell it to them for 10 bucks in the States, $10 US and uh, plus shipping. Shipping's crazy. Shipping's going to cost you another 10 bucks. So it really doesn't make sense for an American to buy this. But in Canada, you know, $10 and it's going to cost about $5 shipping and uh, it'll get right to you. No problem at all. Let's go over the pros and the cons. Very good price. $6.99. <laughs> uh, 90 cents for shipping. Uh, in Canadian, it's $9.23. In euros, it's 6.12. And in pounds, it's 5.41. And like I said, the G10 version costs even less uh, by about 30 cents on the US dollar. So just a little bit less for the G10. Lockup is good. Detent is good. Stays closed in your pocket when you want it to, so it doesn't accidentally open. That's good. The handle is comfortable. I like it's nice feeling. Good recessed screws here so they don't stick out and bug you. Uh, you know, it's very nice. This finger choils right there. Uh, the balance of the knife is quite good as well, right there. Um, the cons are a little bit thick behind the grind and the grind angle are nasty. Those two things are a big deal, but on a knife this price, you know, you can't expect the world. And that's something I can easily fix up and adjust when I'm sharpening it. All right, here's a little bit after I've sharpened it and, uh, you know, came out very well. On this side, this is the side that was very shallow. And so I've sharpened it near the edge but I haven't sharpened it all the way up the shoulder. I'd have to take off way too much steel. That would waste a whole bunch of steel and I don't want to do that.
But this side where it was too steep, you know, the entire edge has been resharpened. And so that looks good. I don't like wasting steel because the next time you sharpen it, it's going to look a little bit better. And then by the third time this is sharpened, that whole edge there will be cleaned up. So there you go. I guess I need to wash my hands now. Uh, you do have a little chip, or I do, in the wood right here. There's a piece of wood that's been chipped out here when they uh, drilled out the hole for the screw head here, the screw to get in. So there's that little bit, so tiny bit of wood issue. And then the big issue is the release of this. So if everything works great, and if I can get the access here to work great, then I'm gonna say, yeah, this is a recommended knife if you are going to want to do that maintenance yourself as well. If you buy the G10 version, I don't know if it's going to have the same issue or not. And G10 is a little bit harder to sand. And G10 plastic has got glass fibers and things in it that are very bad for your lungs. So you're going to want to wear a respirator if you're going to sand uh, the G10. And it's a good idea to do the same, uh, a nice face mask, if you're going to sand the wood as well. So if I can get that to fix, right there and I'm pretty sure I will then I recommend this especially if you like doing a little bit of work yourself if you don't like doing any work at all on your knives nope this knife is not for you so if you like this video if you like this uh, channel consider supporting Canadian Cutting Edge you can become a Patreon supporter every month I give prizes out to one Patreon supporter who wins the prize for that month and that is through just donating $2 or more per month. So I really appreciate my Patreon supporters. And, you know, other ways of supporting the channel are use my links when you're going to buy something. That works really well. I've got links for GearBest and uh, for Amazon when I get knives in there and some other places. So thank you very much. Remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. <laughs>